what you just heard in the intro is my attempt at doing the song Rock and Roll Band from the very first album from Boston. I've been obsessed with the guitar tone and also the guitar playing of Tom Schulz from that band. And this was my humble attempt at it. So I programmed some drums to try and match the original. I replayed the bass and obviously replayed the guitar. Now, if you heard that guitar tone, you were probably like, okay, that sounds different. So what's different about it? There's really five guitar tones that have broken down. There might be more, there might be some stuff I've missed. If you have any information about that, please let me know in the comments. But I've noticed really five guitar tones that spread out throughout, throughout the first album. The first one is a clean, kind of lo-fi, very filtered kind of tone. The second is a very nice clean tone with a lot of compression. It sounds like it's just a guitar DI going to compression and some EQ. And then sometimes there's like delay and chorus added on top. There's a kind of light gain, if you will, guitar tone. It's not too heavy. It's often used in the rhythm parts where, you know, maybe it's a verse or a bridge or something. And then you have a more gained up tone where it's used either for lead or for the choruses. And then there's a fifth one. And that fifth one sounds fuzzed out, but not in the like fuzz face or uh, something like, a, I don't know, a big muff or something like that. It sounds quite different. I have a bunch of fuzzes here. I tried them all and they don't sound anything like the fuzz from that first album. So I was wondering, what am I missing? I started to do some research and found out that Eric Johnson and Tom Scholz were big fans of the Sea Moon Fresh Fuzz, which was produced in Berkeley, California, I think in the late 60s, early 70s. It's kind of rare and it's rather expensive. I was looking for some kind of alternative. That's where I got in contact with JHS with uh, the Legend of Fuzz series. They have this guy here, aptly named Berkeley, which makes reference to what I just talked about. The moment I plug this in to the Kemper, where I have profiles of different rock men units, uh, like the sustainer, so on and so forth, it just unlocked the whole thing for me. So putting that fuzz through the Kemper profile where I have different rock men units just gave me the tone you just heard in the intro. What did Tom Scholz use? Well, I'm gonna be referencing what I could find online and some of the stuff I already knew, but his guitar was a 1968 Gibson Collector's Choice. His one is number 10, came with P90 pickups. He ended up removing the bridge pickup and put in a DiMarzio Super Distortion. In terms of amplifiers, when he started out, he was using the Marshall Super Lead 100 with the matching cabinet. I don't know which speaker came with the matching cabinet. I've been trying to look up that information. There seems to be different models, so it's really guesswork at this point. Like if I was to replicate this more analog, I'm guessing he was probably using greenbacks, but if you know for sure, please let me know because I'm gonna try to do this experiment, not with just a Kemper, but at some point I'm gonna be doing it with analog rig. I have a uh, Three Bananas Galactopus, which is a hand-wired amp made in Germany, and it's going for that more Marshall-esque type of tone. So I'm go definitely gonna try that with this and a Vox cabinet here that I have loaded with a 70th anniversary and a greenback. So I'm gonna see if I can get in the vicinity of that kind of tone using more analog rig. But for today, I'm gonna to be going with like a sure, sure thing where I'm using Rockman profiles. He was also using uh, the X100, which was the headphone amplifier, and he was using the Rockman sustainer. And this came in more, I think, around the album third stage where you can tell there's a difference in his guitar tone, where he was using actually the gear that he was producing. And in terms of pedal, there's the hyperspace, but the hyperspace, there's like two units and they've never been in production. So I'm gonna be using and pointing here at the Jupiter FX Fernve, which can, if you hold down the looper, it gets you that kind of spaced out, weird, glitchy kind of uh, space effect, if you will. He also used the MXR6 band, a Rockman stereo chorus, and the Fresh Fuzz, which I've just mentioned. So let's go explore some tones. I'm gonna get you to listen to the C, the, the not the Sea Moon Fuzz, but rather the uh, Berkeley, 
through a Marshall-esque type of amp. So we have a reference point. We can hear what it sounds like going through a more conventional rig. And then we're gonna go back to the Kemper. I'm gonna show you which profiles I'm using, and I'm gonna show you how I go about recreating that classic tone. So this is kind of my interpretation. It's not a 100% copy and accurate. I'm sure I could still tweak it in, but I think I'm pretty close. So let's go check that out. Now we're gonna to listen to the Berkeley through a Marshall type amp. This is the Three Bananas Galactopus. So I just wanna show you what this fuzz does to a regular setup, and then we're gonna put it through the Kemper over here where I have a Rockman style uh, profile going on, and we're gonna see how that interacts with that particular tone. So right now I have the fuzz going through the clean channel, which sounds like this. So I'm on the bridge pickup. What you're gonna notice with the Berkeley is that it has so much output level, it is absolutely insane. So through a clean channel, you really have to be vigilant about how you set this. So right now, the gain, which is actually the overall volume coming out of this pedal, is actually almost off because it's so freaking loud. So let's have a listen here. Now, I don't want to clip the audio and completely mangle it, but just to show you, I'm just going to... Now, the bite is actually the gain itself, or if you want, the amount of distortion. Over here we have the mode, which is a modification that JHS has done to this pedal, which takes it from a more dark tone, like the original circuit, and then brightens it up. But as it brightens it up, it also increases the overall output. So. Now we're going to use the Berkeley through the dirty channel of the Galactopus. I have the gain set at 4, bass, middle, and treble at noon. The master volume is at 4. I'm not using the boost. And the bite, which is the presence, is at 6. Right now, the fuzz knob is all the way down, and I have the gain or output level at about the same thing. The bright is not on, so here's my reference tone. So I'm already getting a pretty significant boost in volume.
So the interesting thing about the Berkeley is that it almost sounds like it could be used as just a simple boost in front of an amp to just give it more character, which I think might be what Tom Scholz did back in the day when he used the Seamoon Fresh Fuzz. So I just want to do one last thing here, which is to crank everything up. heard what the Berkeley sounds like through a tube amp I want to put it through the Kemper profiler where I have a profile of the sustainer from Rockman now this particular one is called the sustainer crunch one it's a little more gained out than the other profile which is the crunch two so I'm going to show you both profiles and then we're going to listen to the Berkeley and I'm just going to make sure that I don't have too much fuzz going on I'm going to have the fuzz down all the way and I have the output level at around seven, seven and a half. So if I'm to play that intro from Rock and Roll Band, you're gonna see that it's really different than what I've recorded for the intro of this video. So this is what it sounds like. Here is crunch number two. Now these, I could probably take the gain from the profile and increase it. I could probably use different pedals in the front of the Kemper Profiler, but everything I've tried so far doesn't make it sound anything like the recording. So what I have right now is the mod switch turned on so it's a little brighter. And like I said, the setting is the fuzz all the way down and the gain at around seven, seven and a half. <laughs> This is much closer to the actual recording. Let's go back to the stock tone. So let's try that now with the former profile, which was Sustainer Crunch 1. Let's go with the bass tone. Of course, this on its own is not enough to say that, you know, I've completely 100% nailed the Tom Scholz first album uh, type of guitar tone there, but at least it gets me close in that ballpark, if you will. Depending on the profile that you use, if you're going to be using some of the profiles you can find on the Rig Exchange, some of them sound more authentic than others. If you actually have some Rockman gear, you can try that out. I remember having a uh, Rockman soloist and I had tried some pedals in the front of that unit and it did not sound very good. But I don't know about the other, like the more rack mount style versions of uh, the Rockman, but I definitely encourage you to give this a shot and see for yourself if you think that this is actually one of the missing ingredients to get that type of tone. Personally, I think it is because if I play other songs that I suspect use the Sea Moon Fresh Fuzz would be something like Four Play Long Time. Now it sounds a little more authentic with the other profile, so I'm going to try that. <laughs> so 
Something else that I suspect is that the Seamoon Fresh Fuzz was probably used on some of the lead parts. So if you have something like this. So let's try that without the fuzz. Not exactly a gained up sound. I have another profile here which is supposed to be more of a lead tone, but notice how different that's going to sound. So really bright and fizzy, not quite the same tone as using the sustainer crunch. And just instantiating the Berkeley. Now, something else that I suspect is that the Seamoon Fresh Fuzz was probably used on the main guitar parts for more than a feeling. I'm going to show you what I mean here. So, without, I would get this sound. Something else that I suspect is that the fuzz was probably used on the main guitar parts for more than a feeling. I've never been able to dial in that specific type of rhythm tone that he uses on the choruses with any of the profiles that I have. So I suspect that there was probably at least something like the fuzz boosting the front end of whatever gear he was using. So let's have a listen to the two profiles without the Berkeley, and then I'm going to kick it in. So that was Sustainer Crunch 1, let's try Sustainer Crunch 2. have any of the delays or courses layered on top so I could probably make this even more credible by adding more processing but I wanted to stick to like the bare bones of what I think is that fuzz that sound I'm gonna go to the sustainer crunch one I'm gonna play essentially the same thing again and because the voicing is a bit different and the gain structure is different on this profile let's see what the Berkeley does <laughs> Now, if you like this video, I'm going to be making more in this series. So I'm going to try and get my hands on more pedals, different guitars, different amplifiers that are signature pieces of gear from different artists. And I'm going to keep exploring and see if I can sound like myself or if I'm really locked in to sounding like someone else. So if you enjoyed this video, click here on screen. There are more videos just like it. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Cheers.